This daring young man on his flying trapeze is actually made of paper in this wonderful automaton. But look carefully. He's modelled on a real person. Jules Leotard. In the 1860s, Monsieur Leotard was a celebrity, performing in circuses, theatres all over the world. He was known as a daring young man for his terrifying feats high up on the flying trapeze. And also for the tight-fitting outfit that he wore, which took his name, ever after known as the Leotard. Our automaton acrobat is powered by sand. Sand is a motive force that's been used for over a thousand years. Here in this design from Hero of Alexandria, of a moving temple, you can see that the sand slips away through a small hole, allowing a weight to descend, propelling the temple along. Our sand acrobat uses a slightly different method. The weight of the sand itself falls into a veined wheel, a bit like a water wheel. Here our sand wheel is filled up and spins to the right or the left in a seemingly random manner. The sand falls from a hopper with one open side. It falls down into the dead centre of the wheel. Let's take a closer look at Monsieur Leotard in action in the sand automaton. Here you can see he goes both clockwise and anti-clockwise and in the manner of a chaotic pendulum he seems to sometimes hang, sometimes wait, before rapidly turning one way and the other. Most of these automata of this period have the name of our artiste, Monsieur Leotard, and also the maker of the sand toy. I think they were mostly made by outworkers because they're incredibly crude probably supplied as a kit of parts to be assembled on a piece rate. The sand acrobat is actually still being made. Here's an example from the 1980s. Made in China, our acrobat has now lost his name Still wound by turning the sand automaton towards the right, placing all the sand into the hopper inside. You'll notice that this modern version performs with much less agility than our 19th century Monsieur Leotard. All the same ingredients appear to be there in the mechanism. The hopper, the wheel, but what's missing are the tiny slip of glass that act as a back bearing for the main arbour. And the hole is no longer directly above the centre of the wheel, so this modern acrobat can only go in one direction. Sand automata were made in the 19th century of many different subjects, and we have here a smaller sand automaton of a drummer. Produced about the same time as our Monsieur Leotard, this drummer has a completely different action. It's sealed at the back and you can see the filling hole where the sand went in and some instructions in French. We rotate the box to cause the sand to run into the hopper where it will trickle down through a hole onto a wheel. But this time, pins on the wheel act to lift and drop tiny pieces of pivoted wire, the other end of which are attached to the drummer's hands. 
so the drumsticks beat a little tune and as the wire falls off the wheels, the pins on the wheel, it makes a little drumming sound which is quite nice. We've repaired many of these sand automata. This one came with a single badly drawn and painted leg. Obviously he needed a pair of replacements and now you can see the replacements in the background just prior to fitting. We were also commissioned by a museum to make a demonstration model robust enough for the public to handle. Here you can see we fitted a perspex back so whoever was operating it could turn it round and see exactly how it worked. You can just see the glass bearing held by a little bracket at one end of the wheel. To wind him up, of course you turn him over until all the sand has fallen into the hopper. Placing it upright, off he goes. The arrow on the back indicates the direction you should turn the automaton in order to refill the sand. Now here's a sand toy that's really quite special. I'm very excited about this. It's a juggler. He's not working at the moment and in fact we've got quite a bit of restoration to do. But you can see he's balanced on a tower of bottles and he throws the yellow balls up into the air. There are the bottles. The yellow balls are against a black background which means you won't see the wires when they're in fast motion. Now there's quite a lot of movement here and if we look in the back you'll see the usual very crude construction cardboard paper and unfortunately some bad previous repairs in here so we've got some putty acting as a spacer and I think the wires are completely in the wrong position. This would be the winding action and the sand would go into the hopper following this action. Now I'm going to try and remove the wheel. It's a veined wheel and when I remove the wheel you should be able to see the levers and the offset cam that pushes the levers up and down behind. A little bit tricky to get out. There's a good view of the veins here. This is designed to go in one direction only and there's the offset cam unfortunately a crude replacement not quite in the right position as the original so we're going to get back to basics here there's the original the position of it and the new one doesn't go as far and is in the wrong place you can also see the putty spacer on the other side this will have to be replaced as well Here in the back you can see the levers, just bent pieces of wire with soldered on additions. Here are two arms for the balls. There are two balls affixed to each of those two wires and to me these look like replacements as well, which is a bit worrying for the restoration. If I can get this restoration done correctly, it will be magnificent. A magical piece. When refilling with sand it's important to make sure you have fine dry clear clean sand and here I am sieving it because inevitably small pieces of paper get into the sand 
and you can see the debris there that would clog the hole in the hopper. If I put some sand in, I can turn the sand toy the box around and you can see the actual passage of the sand. It's the same in Monsieur Leotard in the drama. This is what's happening when you're turning the sand toy. That sand disappears into the hopper. And here you can see it propelling this juggler's wheel. And there is some movement there of the juggling balls, but it should be a lot faster. So you can barely see what's happening. Now, before the sand has completely run out, here's Maria, who's going to tell you about an exciting course we ran for making sand toys from scratch. Did you know that you can make your own sand toy at home? Here's an example of one I made in a workshop with children. It's made from a shoe box. You could use a cereal packet too. There's a cardboard hopper, a cardboard wheel, a cocktail stick pivot, and there is my little acrobat. And this is how it works. It's sealed up with sand inside. You put the sand in the hopper. The sand trickles down onto the wheel, which turns. And there you see the acrobat is doing his somersaults. Yes! It seems it was a really fun course. And I was amazed at just how creative and diverse the different sand toys that the kids produced were. I'm not